When you've had MonoVision done and you come back for your first follow-up visit, you might still have a few queries. You might be finding that it's not as good as you thought it might be and you're still struggling with a few issues. So what I want to do is share with you some things you can do to improve the MonoVision. And I think what we'll do is start with things you can do for distance. Now one of the things you'll notice is when you look in the distance with a good eye, it looks absolutely perfect. Everything's good. The letter's clear and the outline of the letter's clear. There's no glare around lights. As opposed to when you look in the distance with your reading eye, you'll find that it's more blurry and it's more glary. So one of the things people do is they're driving home at night in the dark and they're saying, oh man, look at the glare. This glare is irritating. I'm seeing glare around traffic lights. I'm seeing glare around car lights. And before long, the brain thinks you want to see glare. So all it does is it looks for glare for you. And you're aware of all the glare. It makes a lot more sense to do the following. First of all, you can't cheat your brain and say there is no glare because there is glare. So you acknowledge, yes, there is some glare. I can see it. But I can see the car registration in front of me, or I can see the road sign. And you start showing the brain what you can see. And now the brain starts saying, all right, this is interesting. So what you want to do is you want to see the detail. You say, yeah, I'm going to see the detail. And the brain then does something really interesting. What it does is it starts using more of the right eye. And to improve the distance vision, it starts ignoring the glare. So by acknowledging there's glare, but then focusing on what you can see, the brain starts working on suppressing the glare. And before you know it, there's no more glare anymore. And another thing you can do when your distance vision seems just a tad unclear is you simply do this and you show the brain, that's the blurry eye, that's the good eye, so the brain's reminded. And then you do another thing, only for seconds at a time. You're looking in the distance and you're saying, hmm, that could be better. You then close the reading eye and as soon as you notice things are clearer, you open it again, and as soon as you notice it's slightly more blurry, you close it again, and then open it again. And every time you close it, the brain realizes the image is clearer, because it's only the good eye's image coming in. And what it learns from that exercise is that it sees better in the distance when it's not using the reading eye. And it's a, it's a trick or it's a, an exercise you can do to help the brain use the dominant eye. And now the same thing can happen for near. You can be looking at something up near and finding it slightly tricky and all you do again is you now close the good eye, the distance eye, and you'll suddenly find the near vision is absolutely perfect. You open both eyes, it's slightly less good. You close the distance eye and it's improved again and this exercise is again showing the brain that you see better with the left eye for near and specifically, when you don't use the distance eye, it's even better. So in that little exercise, the brain has learned to, number one, use the eye that it was intended for, for that distance. And secondly, it's learned how to suppress the eye that you don't want to use. And then the final thing is, when you're busy getting used to monovision, it's important that while this process is evolving, that you don't confuse the two eyes. So what you can do is you can sit back and look at distance, the television for argument's sake, and you'll see, all right, much better with the distance eye, much worse with the near eye. Then you look at something up real close, and much better with the reading eye, worse with the distance eye. And then what you do is you start moving this away until you find the distance at which the two eyes are very, very similar. And the distance where the two eyes are the same is where they compete. And while you're getting used to monovision and you're training the brain to do monovision, you don't want any competition. So what you've got to do while you're, you're busy training your brain for monovision is you've got to find the distance where the two eyes are the same and competing, and you've got to avoid that distance. And for most people, it's somewhere over here at arm's length, and often that um, corresponds with the computer screen. So at any distance where you do this and you say, oh yeah, the two eyes are the same, either bring things closer to favor the reading eye or hold things further away or look at things further away to favor the distance eye. But what you don't want happening is the two eyes competing. And if you bear those few things in mind and you try those things and you do them on a 
semi-regular basis. It's only going to make your mono vision work more effectively, more quickly.